Good morning, it's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coming up on today's show, Bryant the violinist, he is in the house and I can't wait for you to find out about his story. Also, I got some entertainment tea that I'm going to spill for you, so keep it right here. Coffee cups up, pinkies are out. It's time to get lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. <laughs> Just for but you, smiling at cause God loves you. Get up and get lamped, 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 lamped. The Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. All right, well, it's time for the entertainment tea. I'm going to spill it for you. Listen, the tea is going to drip very fast, so get your cup and get ready. First of all, this story is more so for my Atlanta viewers, more than my South Carolina viewers. So all of you out in my Atlanta metropolitan region, good morning. How are you all this morning? Hope all is well. Talking about Amanda Davis. Now, of course, most of you do know Amanda Davis. Amanda Davis works for Fox 5 out of Atlanta, um, and they're moving her case, her court case, Right, she has a court case. The anchor off Fox 5 has a court case. Of course, all of you have heard about it, the story where she was driving DUI second offense. Now, what troubles me with this story is that people are calling for her resignation. Let me give you a little bit of the backlog. In November 2012, she um, was involved in a head-on collision. She was driving in the wrong lane because she was um, found to be under the influence, allegedly. And so she's going to have to go to court for this. They're moving this to the state court. But however, what's, what's happening is people are calling for her resignation. They're saying, you know what? We think Amanda Davis should resign. My question, I, I think what baffles me about this story, remember, this is just my opinion. My issue is, is that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. Things happen. However, if we were to pull back your closet sheet, let's just take off your bed sheet for a moment. And when we pull off your bed sheet, we will find things that you don't want people to see. If people were to see that, should they call for your job? I, I, I just don't understand. And I understand that she's in the public spotlight as an anchor. She's giving the news. Now she is the news. However, should her job be compromised because of this? I just, I, I have a problem with that. I think that unless there's a moral clause, now if the company that hired her wants to do something like that, fine. But for you to say, I don't want to see you on TV anymore reporting the news because of this incident. And I know what could have been and what should have been, but by the grace of God, it wasn't. So why are we calling for her job resignation? I'm just saying, just my opinion. Moving to the next story, because I'm going to make it fast. I'm going to make sure I get all of the tea in for you. Have you seen HBO's The Wire? Okay, so you, Baltimore, yeah, going up to the city real quick, Baltimore, Maryland. So this story is about Tavon, Tavon Bulldog White. Now, Tavon Bulldog White is, um, he is the head of the Black Gorilla um, Gang. And of course, he was locked up in um, the Baltimore prison. Of course, he was found on, on record according to an indictment, because a federal indictment has come forward. Why are you talking about this story, Jeffrey? Because it baffles me. Tavon, one man, five babies, four women, while he was in prison. Let me say it one more time. One man, five babies, four women, all while in prison how he was running the prison. He would actually be on the line saying, I run this prison. Nothing goes through me. No, everything has to come through me. Nothing gets by me. And he impregnated these women. He was giving them diamond rings, allowing them to drive his Mercedes Benz. And not only that, y'all, but the other thing that really gets me, he was making $16,000 a month while in prison. $16,000. That's a lot of money. I wonder what he paying taxes. We'll talk about taxes in a moment. However, $16,000 a month he was paying while in prison. And he was making this money. I, I just don't understand it. My thing is not to Tavon. And my thing is not to the four security guard women, but to the HR department. Who is hiring these people? I don't understand. Okay, last story. We were talking about taxes. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, pay your taxes. The miseducation of Lauren Hill was that she was never educated that she needs to pay taxes. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. Listen, Lauren Hill. Okay, so of course she went to court recently. 
The court has given her two weeks. She has two weeks to come up with $504,000. That's a lot of money, again. But let me give you the nitty and the gritty because you know Jeffrey Lampkin always has the tea. So Lauren Hill has uh, reportedly signed a deal with Sony, her old label, that she's going to produce another, uh, cut another album, because we haven't had an album since what? That Water Rush Dry 2.0? We haven't had an album since then, but the most anticipated album was a real album, studio album, was the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. They're saying that she's going to, they're gonna give her an advance of $600,000, which is gonna help with this debt. She may still have to go to jail. My only problem with this, I have a problem with it. Lauren, you ain't never wanna make no music for us. We, you gave us that one album, then you just walked away from us, and we were waiting. You won all these Grammy Awards, we wanted it. We could, you were so good to be true, we couldn't take our eyes off you, and now you wanna come back and make an album because you need money. I want passion, I want the music. Speaking of passion and music, that's what we're gonna do today. Listen, Brian the Violinist is here. However, before I leave, you can catch me today. If you're in town, Jordan Community, I'm at Mount Chapel Baptist Church. I'll be celebrating their youth day today as the guest speaker, so I'm excited about that. Had a wonderful time last night in King Street, South Carolina. King Street, thank you so much for your love. I'm Joshua Rogers from BT Sunday Best was there. It was great. I gotta go, coffee cups up, pinkies are out. Take a moment, get your breakfast, get ready for church. It's time to get lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. <laughs> Exceptional women know where to shop for shoes when an everyday look won't do. At Kix Lady Shoes, you'll find the latest fashions at prices you can afford. Shop the new flirty fine shoes, all priced under $100. Whether you're looking for career wear, comfortable shoes, or fun, pretty spring fashions, you'll find the largest selection of shoes and purses at Kix Lady Shoes. And when you shop at Kix Lady Shoes, you keep your money here in Columbia with a locally owned business. Shop us today on Divine Street and like us on Facebook. <laughs> show, we support local entertainment and we're supporting in the form of Mr. Bryant, the violinist. Hi, Brian. Hi, Jeffrey. Good morning. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. How are you feeling this morning? I'm glad to get live. Obviously, <laughs> obviously. Now, Brian, uh, watching you this morning, first of all, Clearly you're dressed in your all white like you're about to go get baptized this morning. <laughs> Clearly y'all think we're about to have a baptism this morning, right? Not this morning. So, right, there we go. <laughs> Brian, talk to us for a moment because first of all, you hail from Columbia, South Carolina. Yes, sir. And you're a violinist. I am. That is a rarity. Very rare. Talk to us a little bit. How did you get involved um, into music first of all? Well, actually, um, I didn't want to play the violin at first. Okay. I was very reluctant about it. We had to pick an elective in middle school. Mm -hmm. I went to W.A. Perry Middle School. Okay. So um, I wanted to be in the band. All the cool kids were in the band. So I said, you know, I wanted to play the slide trombone or the saxophone, something okay. cool. Got to the band. It was filled up. Ended up in the orchestra. Wow. Didn't want to play the violin. I thought it was kind of a girly instrument. Okay. I didn't, uh, didn't set right. But actually, um, after I um, ended up playing and found out I had a little talent for it, I actually loved it, mm -hmm. ended up loving it, and um, I actually advanced past the other kids my age, so that kind of helped me uh, to stay encouraged right. and, and, and keep up with it. And when we were thinking about careers, I always said, I wanted something that I can do where I wouldn't have to retire from. Even as a okay. child, I was thinking like right. that. So I said, I can play music forever, you don't have to retire from that. For the rest of your life. Exactly. Make it happen. Yeah. What does music mean to you? I mean, you know, a lot of times we have people who are performers, and of course they talk about being able to perform, being able to um, be out on stage. What does being on stage do for Brian? Because you're not vocally singing, but you're allowing your music and your yeah. craft to come through a violin. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things as a singer, I'm able to give you words to yeah. articulate, to help you feel my original material. But how do you make your audience feel the music um, of what's happening at that moment? Um, well, it's all about the way you express the music. It's all about feeling, and I'm learning it as I get older. It's not more or less of a technical thing for, as far as getting all the notes correct, but it's more or less of relating uh, an emotion of maybe the artist or the composer had, or maybe that you're feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. I've had people weep when I've played, wow. I've, and, and that's really moving to what really touch like? people. What's that when, moment when, like? when people um, say that you've inspired me to pull my instrument out of the closet, or you inspired me just today, I realize now that's more important than fame, that's more important than, than money. Right. Um, when, when, you're able, when you're able to actually touch people. There was a lady who said, I hadn't played violin in 40 years, and I saw you playing, and I decided to pick it back up just 
for fun. The power. The exactly. The power of your music and your ministry. Saul was um, relieved when David played to him. Right. But at the same token, uh, Saul was upset when he heard a song mm -hmm. that, that David slayed more uh, Philistines right. than he did. So music has a way of getting out both negative and positive. And positive emotions. But I, I try to pull out the positive emotion. And I haven't done my job unless someone cries, mm -hmm. unless someone gets goosebumps mm -hmm. or inspired. They got to feel that emotion. They got to feel it. <laughs> yeah. Feel an emotion. Y'all know I get emotional. I love I'll it. I'll play it for so you later. let's talk about it. I love it. <laughs> let's talk about it for a moment. So of course you, you got into music, you're doing music, went to W.A. Perry, went on and continued with the violin. Yes. And you're doing it. Where has the journey taken you what, oh. so what are some of the great things that have happened with you playing the violin because i've actually seen you around. and now word on the street you were with my girl grammy winner angie angie so oh that wow. was amazing that Talk was to amazing me about that well um i was fresh out of high school wasn't really sure that what high school did you go to? ac floor shout out Falcons. to ac floor good morning <laughs> out there. And, and wasn't really sure where the music would be my thing because i always felt that i needed a safety net and and um, actually uh, music ended up being that safety net. But I met Angie, uh, first I was, I, I was playing at a grocery store at Kroger's on Kroger? Forest Drive. Are uh, you serious? I just, go play, just playing outside? Just playing outside. Cause you have to go where people spending money. The, but that is the truth <laughs> now. I mean, you can't go clearly. to the business district where everyone has credit cards. You have right. to go where so I was out there, um, they call it busking when you're a street performer. Okay. So I was out there playing and um, I actually met her twice. The first time I met her, I, I had no idea who she was. And then the uh, second time, <laughs> yeah, I didn't you know. had no clue who Angie Stone was. Know who, I, I was Brian, I, was, I need you to do better. <laughs> now, I need you to do better. Clearly, there's no more rain in this house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Keep going. Go so, ahead. so she, so she came back and she's like, you know what? I, am? I, I, I knew by then. I said this lady named Angie Stone. Everybody got. I was like, you don't know who Angie Stone is? I, I was so sheltered with Mozart at that point. I, wow. I hadn't, I hadn't had any experience. I was so green. Okay. And um, and she said, would you like to go on tour with me? And this was the BK tour. This was a while back. Um, Luther Vandross. We were the opening act for Luther Vandross, and um, I begged, I said, please, please, when are you going to let me play? She said, I really bought you on to let you know how it is on tour, what the music industry is like. If there's something for you, would you be a solo artist? Could you make it? I said, yeah, I can make it. I just want to play so I can have something right. to tell the people. So I played. They loved it. Um, we have great communications to this day, um, and it, it's been a wonderful journey. Juilliard. Mm -hmm. I got a, another another opportunity. Um, fresh out of school, I get this letter in the mail saying I should come to the symposium at Juilliard. Mm -hmm. Don't know how they heard of me or, or who wrote them about me. And um, Debbie D McDaniels owns Ravon and Five Points. Okay. She, she's so nice. She paid for my airline tickets mm -hmm. and a hostel for me to stay. Mm -hmm. Got to New York at Juilliard, prestigious music school, mm -hmm. and they had a room reserved for me on the 20th floor. So mm -hmm. first time in New York, Manhattan, two places to stay. Central Park right there, music, wonderful. Everything was great. So um, but, and between those experiences, that gave me the catalyst to say, this is something that I really want to do. You know, it's amazing how when you're actually in your gift and you're using your gift in a way that God has allowed you to use it, how those doors will open for you exactly. in such a way that's mind blowing. But one thing that we've learned is the same way you said earlier about Saul and how it brings out positive and negative emotions. Although there are many people that like what you do, there are many people that don't like what you do. Yeah. And there are some struggles when it comes to being a starving artist and one in the music industry. We're going to talk about it when we come back because we talked about the beautiful side, but I want to understand the negative side of some of your struggles because you're outside playing in front of Kroger. Clearly bills still have to be paid. Oh yeah. And I'm sure everybody's not dropping hundreds inside the bucket. Oh yeah. So we're going to talk <laughs> about it. Listen, <laughs> we're here with Brian the Violinist. We're having a wonderful time. Keep it right here. Your coffee cups are up. Your pickies are out. More with the Jeffrey Lampton Show when we come back. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampton. <laughs> Go see Dr. Terrence Tindall at Jerome and Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia style leader, Jerome and Company. Hi, I'm Amy Dillon from Palmetto State Armory. We're out here at Threat Management Group's outdoor training range conducting intermediate and advanced training courses. We are now offering advanced handgun, carbine, and shotgun training at our outdoor facility. 
please contact us for more details on all firearm courses. We look forward to seeing you on the range. Watch Fox News, brought to you locally by Always Money, where there is always a way. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. You know, I'm having a ball. Some of the things that happen between takes are quite entertaining, but nonetheless, we're back here this morning with Brian, the violinist, who is, yeah. I'm so honored and elated to have Thank him you. on the show this morning. Thank it's you. so good seeing dressed in all white. I told you, clearly <laughs> springtime come out and people get pure. My God. <laughs> nonetheless, did I just snort? I think I just snorted. <laughs> oh, the things that happened on the show this morning, but y'all love it, like it and love it. Brian, let's talk this morning. So we were talking beforehand about you being a violinist. Yes. Of course, hailing from Columbia, going and be able to um, work at the Juilliard School of Music and um, touring behind Angie Stone and, and doing these things. But how, the, the struggle is real. That's yes. one of my, my sayings, especially as a musician, oh, the yeah. struggle is real. I know my musicians out there, when we talk about tr trying to be a full-time musician, oh, trying yeah. to be a full-time church musician, um, just an artist musician, whatever you try to be, the struggle is real because sometimes people don't want to pay you oh, yeah. for your gifts. Let's talk about it. How how are you able to live your life as a full-time musician? Actually, I've been doing music um, full-time for a year now. Okay. Got my taxes done, thank God. Okay. Don't want to end up in any trouble like <laughs> some other musicians. Right. But, um, and it's actually been um, lucrative for me. Okay. God has really blessed me, but it, it, it does come with a lot of work, okay. a lot of struggle. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, you may not get paid on time. Mm -hmm. That's why I have certain policies set up, contracts. Right. Um, to make sure that these things are in place. And, and it comes by experience. Mm -hmm. um, you will know how to read people right. over over time. But, but it definitely has its uh, hard days. And then tell them you're not a sideways musician because you said something early because, yeah. you know, some of us, if we saw you outside playing on the street, we would yeah. think, oh, this is a homeless man trying to make money. Yeah, exactly. But that's not the case because what we, we need to learn history a lot of times. When you go to New York, New Orleans, Detroit, Chicago, exactly. there's like networks of musicians that actually stand on the street and all they do is play or they sing or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be Makes you're the only one that I actually see around in Columbia yes what is that like to be the trendsetter for the market that is a very good feeling and I tell people I try to encourage younger people and even mm -hmm. the college kids who are playing uh, instruments or singing or doing whatever go out and do it make Columbia a cultural place to be okay. um, um, let's not give all of our culture to Charleston or, 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 or the right. low country. Let, let's um, Bring it show here. people, yeah, show people what we have to offer. We have the Philharmonic, we have the university, there's uh, we different have, different universities. We have, exactly. And we have Artista Vista, because you just performed there. That was great. How was it? I performed there every year, that was wonderful. Oh, wow. um, I, uh, I perform at the Carolina Cup uh -huh. uh, every year, that was um, wonderful. So there are opportunities out there, but you have to be business minded right. as, as well as mm -hmm. uh, musically talented. So you have to kind of put yourself out there. Word of mouth is always good. Advertising is mm -hmm. always good. Getting lamped is better. Come on, somebody. <laughs> hey, time to get lamped. This is <laughs> Let me ask this question. I, I want to ask a real question. Because a lot of times, of course, as African Americans, we sing. We sing, we play keys and stuff like that. You're a violinist. Yes. So I'm going to ask the question that I'm Go sure ahead. everyone's burning to know. <laughs> um, how difficult is it for you? Is it a plus or is it a negative being African American and being a violinist? I think it's definitely a plus because, one, um, a lot of the, the, my black audience will mention it. Before my white audience will, mm -hmm. they mention it's rare that I see a black guy with the violin. It's the truth, though. And I love and I love this and I, I love to hear that. Okay. Um, uh, at the same token, I want to be that person to be the trendsetter to, okay. to tell other African Americans say, hey, strings can be fun. It never was a uh, white or a black thing. It was more or less it's, a cultural thing. It's, that's music. That's yeah. music. It's not a white thing. It's not a black thing. It's a universal thing. thing. It exactly. brings us all together exactly. in a way that cannot be compared, that cannot be contrasted. Let me ask this, this final question before we go. If you could say anything right now out there to a musician mm -hmm. who is struggling, mm -hmm. um, I think the struggle is real. The struggle, so is real. To, the struggle is real. So to a musician who's out there this morning who wants to make it, who wants that, but everyone's looking for the record deal, 
<laughs> Does it happen that way, or what do they need to do? Well, first of all, record deals aren't all what they are cracked up to be. Because you had one. I, I had a, a record deal, a, a small, and, and it's actually still ongoing, so I'm not going to mention too much okay. on that. But it was the local record company, and uh, procrastination is not my friend. Right. And I was ready to have my project done. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done, so simply I'm moving on. Okay. Um, this summer I'm having a, a YouTube project that I'm opening up, and um, I'm going to keep you informed on that and and that's going to be the point where I give tips on uh, to musicians okay. on uh, how to live this life it, there'll be free violin lessons okay. and of course uh, uh, me playing at my various venues awesome. so I'm gonna have that YouTube project going on so look for that mm -hmm. So you're going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. Well, you know what? I need you to make it happen this morning because clearly now I know all my viewers are like, look, Jeffrey, y'all done talk. We done heard his story. Now I need to know if he's the real deal. I'm telling <laughs> you he's the real deal. Will you come back and play? I will. Clearly you're dressed all pure and then wide. <laughs> you should play something tonight. You all right. <laughs> Nonetheless, keep it right here. We're so excited. Brian, the violinist, is here this morning. We're having a great time here in the studio. Listen, coffee cups up. I know you're getting ready for church. Somebody's going to get like Brian. They got to usher. You ushering this morning? I'm not ushering this morning. <laughs> Listen, keep it right here. More is happening on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. <laughs> Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Go see Dr. Terrence Tindall at Jerome and Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia Style Leader, Jerome and Company. Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Watch Fox News, brought to you locally by Always Money, where there is always a way. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cup's down right now. I know you're getting ready for church, but I want you to pause, take a moment, because we talked all morning with Bryant the violinist, but guess what? He's here to play. Now, before he plays, because I promise you, after he plays, everyone's going to want him for their wedding, their funerals, their retirements, and whatever else and beyond. How can people reach you? Brian the Violinist on Facebook. Okay. Okay. So on Facebook, Bryant the Violinist, and that way they'll be able to book you. Now, for those exactly. who don't have Facebook, is there a number that they can reach you at, yes. or is everything still? What's the, um? We'll and we'll get that number on the website for okay. them, so they'll be able to actually see that and, and what. We're okay. so excited that you're here oh, this morning, okay. and you're gonna play a tribute to Whitney Houston. I, now, y'all know I love me some Nippy. Good morning, Nippy. Good morning, Sissy Houston out there this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and let us receive the musical sounds of Bryant the violinist right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show.
Momo's Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 11.30 to 2, and Sunday brunch from 10.30 to 2.30. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. We're back with the word of the day. Hey, the show is over. Wasn't it a great show? I had a ball. Listen, word of the day, dreams. Now, according to Merriam-Webster um, Dictionary, it defines dream as a strongly stated purpose or goal. You know what? I'm here to tell you, just like Brian the violinist, just like myself, everybody has dreams. You have a dream out there today. You know what? Live out your dream. Live out your moment. It's not too late to dream. I don't care how old you are. You can be 40 or 50 years old. There's still a dream that's inside of you. It's not too late to dream, not too late to succeed. One thing you've got to always realize and remember is that your life has purpose, but the only way that that purpose is going to come to fruition is if you believe. So capture your dream, catch it in the air, reach up right now, grab it, and walk in your destiny, capture your dream, and make it become a reality. Listen, next week, same time, same place, it's the Jeffrey Lampton Show. Coffee comes up. Pickies are out. It's church time. Have a great day. Good morning. <laughs> everybody, everybody get up. Come on. Lamps, 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 lamps. With Jeffrey Lamp. Motivation, inspiration, educating new oh. revelation. Lamps, 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 lamps. With Jeffrey Lamp. Entertainment yeah. just for when you. Lamp, Smiling yeah. out because God loves get you. Get up, get lamps. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on.